Farrell. It's great to have you at Winmar HQ today. We're looking to talk a bit more inside your throw. Um, you've got one of the more unique throws on the tour in different aspects. Um, when you're looking um, to approach the Oki, what kind of stance do you look at and how do you start your throw before you get going? Well, first of all, you, you have to find the middle of the Oki. Uh, so <clears throat> it's obviously better thrown straight than thrown off from the sides so the throw goes longer. So start off in the middle. Obviously, you, the first thing you look at is a board and then your body kind of takes over and then you know where your foot goes in automatic. So you, you're very much throwing from the centre of the Oki rather than some players we see widen off and you're throwing down. down the uh, yeah, down the centre and uh, even, even sometimes... Um, the throw uh, looks funny, so actually you can move still a couple of inches to whatever side suits you. But uh, more or less, the first thing uh, is down the centre of the hockey, and uh, well, it's it's a lot easier throwing straight than throwing uh, at an angle. It's very much a feeling for you as well. As soon as you approach the hockey, it's very much based on feeling where you're going to stand to start before you even get in the beginning place for your throw. Um, in terms of the grip that you have, obviously we we teach people here a lot about having um, consistent grips on their darts. How do you grip the dart and what, what things do you look for to feel comfortable with your dart? Uh, well, I grab my, my dart just two fingers and a thumb like this and it's, I think it's just, for me it's just a normal throw and I think most people kind of throw this way and obviously I think and there's a lot of people in that maybe uses uh, their lower finger just to steady up on the point the case that it was moving just to steady it up. But uh, no, uh, the mirror's nice. Uh, this finger is on the grip here, and then my finger and thumb is half on the grip here and a smooth bit at the back. So then I know that once I'm in the middle of that, I know I'm in the perfect grip. If, if I'm feeling just as smooth, I know I'm grabbing the dart too far back, and if it's all gripped then, I'm grabbing it too far forward. So uh, yeah, it's just nice to be perfect like that. Right in the centre here, and then this grip here is just for this finger. Make sure it doesn't slide off and gives me in. Uh, maximum grip so in whenever I bring it back because I've got a short uh, back swing shall we say that uh, gives me enough to get enough power through the dart uh, to get through the board. So talking about that um, short back swing that you've got um, how do you adjust sort of the, the pressure you put on the barrel because um, you've got quite a short back swing you also have quite a powerful follow through do you have quite a lot of pressure on the dart or is it quite loosely um, no, I think it's like if I if I grabbed tight and how hard I throw them, I could end up pulling them easy. I, I've done it years ago uh, before I was in the PDC and BDO and stuff like that. Uh, if I grabbed them too tight, I could really pull them down. But no, I, I grab them just uh, just enough so that they're not going to slip out of my hand. And I mean, here now I've got them down; they're perfect. And the only thing that's really is is you could take it away. There's nothing changes on my thumb. And it's just they kind of rest on, so there's no real tension on it. So if I done that, you can see that my fingers close in, whereas it just sits like that and then just comes out nice and smooth. So again, it's all about the perfect feel for you, feeling where on the barrel and, and getting that, that feeling, of not where you're just you're standing, but how you're throwing. Yeah. Um, a lot is talked about as well about the rhythm of, of players throw, about having consistent rhythms. Um, is there any any sort of things you go through to keep your rhythm going steady or is it again a, a feel thing? Um, it depends on who you're playing really because if you're playing like sort of a, a slow player um, you kind of have to take your time a little bit more. There's players that are slow players but they're very fast at walking and coming back from the hockey whereas you've got slow players who are just slow in general, slow throw, slow pace to the board, slow back so you kind of yeah that's the worst ones because you've got to wait maybe till they come halfway down the hockey and then approach because then the time you throw the three darts and you come back, uh, maybe and do an extra long walk behind the hockey if there's a big enough stage, so then you're not waiting right behind the player uh, as much. But uh, more, more or less, I would say, whenever the, the, the player I'm playing against that's playing a normal pace of a game, they'll throw their last dart, and as soon as they've made that first step over the hockey, I'll uh, make my first step in and obviously we've got a, a boundary we have to stay out so we've got to make two or three steps before we get there and the time I get to the board then they're more or less got their darts in their hand and they're just moving away so uh, it's kind of, it kind of depends on who you're playing really. Is there a preference you have? Do you prefer playing the faster players or maybe the slower players? 
Uh, the faster players, uh, slower players, uh, it depends how slow they are because obviously there's, there's slow, uh, if you watch them on TV it, it looks like they're slow but whenever you're actually in a game with them they're actually a wee bit slower you wouldn't notice as much but then there's the ultimate slow people uh, that really <laughs> kind of annoy you but uh, no, um, so I would say a fast player would suit me but uh, at the same time you've got you to deal with all, all sorts of players. Um, and speaking not just about sort of the pace of how players throw, there's also a, a range of formats that we play across the game now on the tour. Some formats are a lot longer and some are shorter. Do you prefer longer games or would you prefer a shorter, faster format? I uh, prefer a longer format because I know that um, there's some players uh, out there, I, know, I don't know, I'm not going to say any names and I don't know anybody by names, but there's obviously a lot of players out there that... Uh, they, they can throw everything they've got at a best of 11, whether we play in a Pro Tour or, or a European, and they can beat anybody. But you put them in a longer game whenever we've got to go first to 10, whenever you've got breaks in the middle of the game and stuff like that, so I can break up their rhythm. So, um, and I'm more used to that now. So, uh, yeah, a longer game suits me, but at the same time, you get me on the right day. Uh, it doesn't really matter what format we play. And going back more to, to your throw again, um, a lot of players sometimes will focus a lot more on their throw when they're aiming or they have more again of a feel when they're when they're aiming and going for their throw is there a bit of both for you or are you more of a feeling player rather than sort of going through the steps for aiming um no just going through the steps really just um if you're on a double and the player in front of you's had a 180 or first of all wait until he's got out of the way just do the same thing take an extra breath calm down make your approach and make sure you try and throw that first start properly, not rush it, and get it to go in a, a perfect place in the board where you can actually, if it's a bad dart, it's an actually still a good for a marker of a dart, instead of just going, putting it in the wrong place, and then you've got to step two foot to the left or two foot to the right. Uh, and then you've got to maybe go for, say, like, so if you're on double 16, then go for double eight or something. So sometimes it's just all about, uh, just taking your time and breathing at the right time. Breathing's a big thing in darts that a lot of people, uh, whenever I first started off, uh, was one of the things I forgot to do. So whenever I was in the middle of a match, I would have forgot to breathe. And then all of a sudden, then I'm holding my breath for they take a shot and then my heart rate's going up and then my throwing action's gone and then I'm trying to throw the darts out of my hand faster than I can breathe. So, uh, yeah. So there's a lot more involved with the aiming for you rather than just when you have the dart in front of you, it's the coming up to the hockey as well and controlling your breathing and stuff, which is... Yeah, yeah. You know, as I say, it's all about getting it right. Uh, as I say, even though you're throwing uh, at a double, and should, as I say, we'll say double 16 again, make sure you're still in the middle of hockey because whenever you're practicing at home, you don't step four inches to the left because you're on the left-hand side of the board. So you make sure you're still in the middle uh, and that comes just with natural ability or, of a dart player over years. Uh, and then you just step up and hopefully... Uh, you find it with one of them three darts. Hopefully you, you nail it in the first time. So speaking about sort of the, the feeling and the rhythm that you have, moving now on to, to how you practice, is there any specific um, practice routines or ways you prepare for going up to the games and getting on the big stage? Um, at home, I'll just practice uh, around the board in doubles, uh, do probably 20 legs, 501, uh, and then probably doing 1 2 1 to 1 30 finishing. Uh, but whenever I'm coming up to a big tournament, probably the night before, I'll uh, I like to do a 40, 40 finish right up to 120, and you only can do it in one visit. Uh, so that's good practice um, because you're you're using all the doubles on the board instead of just keep on choosing the same your favorite double. Uh, and then obviously, and whenever you say you get to the 80s, then if you're not in a treble, you have to use the bull, and obviously everybody we we need to practice that. So uh, yeah, no, I like to do 40 to 120 finishing about finishing and also putting a bit of pressure on your practice um, not going through with sort of repetition or maybe say scoring and using uh, all of the board so that's to try and get you into top you know performance on the stage um, is there any indicators when you know that you've sort of you're on top form or you've done that enough amount of practice or you need to do more um, I, I'm a big believer in I'd rather over practice and under practice so uh, whenever it comes to it, if I, I've practiced maybe non-stop for say two and a half hours or something like this, I know I need to sit down, but then I'm thinking to myself, I'm getting too close to the game, so I don't want to sit down and switch off. Um, so yeah, that way is kind of hard, but uh, no, I, I usually, 
I don't know many times I've went and I said to my manager, I said, oh, I'm playing awful here. And I've went out and had a 100 average. And then I've done it uh, last year, I was playing probably the best I've ever practiced. And the only way I can say what I did was probably I burnt myself out. Uh, I went up and got hammered by James Wade and it was the best I've ever practiced. And it's just one of them things. Um, maybe it was a difference between throwing uh, on the, the floor uh, in the practice room, maybe there was a difference in length, but uh, I was absolutely on fire. And even even James Wayne, so, uh, James Wade, it took note and says that uh, I was throwing unbelievable. So he was he was watching anyway, and then I went up and put him a performance ago, which made his day. Is is there any way that you sort of look back on those past performances and maybe target areas to practice, or even more of a sort of set routine with your finishing? No, I, I like to just get there um, a certain amount of hours before I play. Uh, and then maybe play a wee bit of one two one with somebody, uh, and then play a bit of twenty one with somebody. So you got a, a twenty one points, a point for a, a hundred, two for one forty, three for one eighty, and if you had a one eighty, you go again, kind of thing. Um, so then yeah, I, mean, I just really do them because then you're doing scoring and finishing, uh, and just to keep you sharp before you uh, walk on the big stage. And obviously, you're a two time major winner on the PDC circuit. Have those experiences helped you maybe with? You would have had that experience before taking that game and practice game from the floor onto the stage. How has that experience sort of felt for you and, and how has it helped you? Uh, well, I think every day, I mean, I know I've got the experience as in nerves wise, but whenever it comes to the day, just some days you think, oh, I'm, I'm thrown unbelievable or I'm off slightly. I, I think it just depends sometimes on the day for me. Uh, obviously, I turn up every day, I put in the same amount of practice, preparation, and I try to be at my peak before I walk on the stage. Uh, so I, I want that Daryl Gurney that's doing 100 averages uh, in every game, but if, um, it's not ha <laughs> hasn't happened as regular as, as I wanted to. So for me, I, I just if I keep on putting in preparation, keep uh, the belief, and put in the hard work, uh, I'll turn around and uh, hopefully kick everybody else's ass. Hopefully, we'll see you uh, pick up a few more majors. Was there any difference between winning um, the Grand Slam, oh, sorry, the, the Grand Prix, compared to when you won um, the Players' Championship at the back end of the year? Was there anything different in between? Because we obviously saw some, some great emotions from you on stage and it meant a lot to you. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the Grand Prix uh, was. I, I can't rem really remember the Grand Prix anymore. It was just a blur, really, because um, I just I remember having the trophy and with me in the room, kind of thing. It was just one of them days that it was like an outer body experience. Uh, uh, I got there, I won it, whatever. It was double in, double out, set play, and then obviously a uh, totally different format um, against Michael in the Players' Championship final. Uh, but uh, obviously, they always say that, that your your first major is the biggest. But I think beating Michael straight up. Because uh, I always say that I think you can gain advantage and double and double out. Because if you got off with your last start and I got off my first, so I've gained an advantage straight away. So um, the game I beat Michael in Players Championship it was a straight up, no mess and everything else. So uh, I, I would say probably the the Grand Prix is a bigger title they won, but if for me, uh, winning the Players Championship is probably a, a bigger one to me. Um, and you've got the the Premier League. You're in the Premier League once again this year. And got Dublin coming up next week. What is it like walking out in front of uh, the crowd in Dublin uh, for you? Because you've done it a couple of times now and you'll be back uh, back next week. Yeah, no, honestly, it's, it's it's fantastic. It's one. Of, it's probably the best venue to play darts in. Um, the, it's such a strange venue because uh, the way the, the arena is, the people feel like you feel like they're, they're going straight up other than you know, gradually going back. So it feels like it's going. they're all going straight up and you're thinking, you know, you think we're all going to fall out of their seats. But uh, no, a great, uh, great atmosphere in Dublin. Uh, they they love the walk on, and uh, obviously the the noise off the crowd, the echo off the roof, and as I say, the way the way it's seated, it's it's perfect for darts. And uh, I think uh, for me, it's one of the best uh, venues that as we play in over the whole year. Well, it's been great talking to you, Daryl. Thank you very much. Not a problem.